Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my YouTube channel, it is RDF, well <laughs> of course, and today's video we have another tactical recreation, this time I am trying to recreate Roberto Di Zerbi's tactic over at Sassuolo. Now before I get into the video, if you're new to this channel or you haven't yet, then please could you press that subscribe button, it would mean a lot. Also, if you're watching this video and you like the content, I wouldn't mind also if you press that like button. But with the intro out of the way, let's get into this recreation. Roberto Di Zerbi is one of Italy's new generation of managerial talents who worked his way up to the top to the Serie A. Sassuolo play a brand of entertaining football, the passing and the movement have made Sassuolo one of Serie A's teams to watch as they evidently play more adventurous than most of the sides in Serie A. Prefers a 4-2-3-1 formation but he's also not afraid to switch it to a 4-3-3 or even go to a 3 at the back. But whatever the system he chooses to go with, the mentality remains the same. There will always be a lot of attacking opportunities as well as a solid midfield which is needed to build attacks and quick ball movements means Sassuolo can disrupt the opponent's defensive shape. But watching his teams play, it is very very clear that he wants to play very entertaining football. First of all, and most importantly, possession is key. In the 2019 and 20 season, they completed 18,697 passes, which was the third most in the league with an 85.8% pass completion. So playing out from the back is also key. They like to stretch play from the build-up with both fullbacks starting out very right and hugging the touchline. This gives better passing angles when the defence are being pressed. They also completed the second least long balls in the league which should give you a clear idea direct balls just isn't what the instruction is. When building from the back they also have the option to give the ball to either the two central midfielders if the pass out wide cannot be completed. Both midfielders can be seen positioning themselves between the opponent's attackers and the opponent's midfielders. Sassuolo have the ability to counter attack to catch their opponents out and aim to have many passing opportunities available on the counter attack with many bodies forward. Often they will have both wingers, the striker and also the attacking midfielder forward. This makes it very very difficult for the opponents to defend against but with this great attack and play on display they can also be caught out on the counter attack. When Sassuolo lose possession they try and press the opposition as one player presses and the others tend to tight mark the opponent's three players making it difficult for anyone to play out. Sassuolo were third in winning the ball in the final third winning the ball 95 times which was the same amount as Atalanta. But my favourite thing about Sassuolo is their mixture of possession play and the directness once certain players receive the ball. Sassuolo managed to complete the most dribbles in Serie A with 512 successful dribbles. Total distance in the yards that Sassuolo carried the ball was 109,568 in the 1920 season. Sassuolo are also not afraid to shoot. On average, their shooting distance was 19 yards away from goal, which was the most in the league. Finally, I want to touch on the movement from the attackers. The two wide players can be seen out wide when play is building up, but as the play progresses, the more narrow their movement starts to become. On the left hand side which was Bolger most of the time, he liked to cut inside and be more involved in the play. The attacking midfielder who liked to position himself more on the right side of the pitch and stay in between the lines with the centre forward on the other hand, he likes to position himself on the left hand side and similar to the attacking midfielder, he likes to position himself in between the lines of the opponent's defenders and the opponent's midfielders. This then gives the two wider players the chance to exploit any gap that may appear. The key elements in this tactic I want to recreate in Football Manager is stealing the ball from the opponents, creating chances through individual skills so that is dribbling and shooting possibly, possession football which is going to be very very key and exploiting spaces through the middle as we want to operate in those half spaces. 
But enough of me talking about that stuff. Let's get right into the tactic and let's see what I have done with the player roles and instructions and also the team instructions. And then after that, we will briefly look at some statistics and analysts before ending the video. So here is the tactic, it is a 4-2-3-1, it's asymmetric also with the attacking midfielder slightly playing on the right hand side and the striker slightly over on the left hand side. The back four consists with two full backs on the support duty and both centre backs with the defend duty. I feel that the two centre back roles is very very key in keeping possession when we are building from the back as I feel that ball playing defenders tend to play that more risky pass and that could then lead to losing possession. On the flanks is both full backs they both have dribble more and get further forward to try and affect play further forward. The reason why they are not running wide stay wider or coming inside narrowly because they now have that flexibility to do what they want as the play progresses so if they feel they need to come inside then that is exactly what they are going to do if they feel they need to go on the outside then again that is exactly what they are going to do for both center backs they have no instructions also sorry for the goalkeeper he also has no instructions in center midfield we have gone with the deep line playmaker on the defend duty and he will be operating just in front of the defense and he will be always an available passing option for the defenders his instruction is closed down more because when you are using a defensive duty especially in midfield what you are also asking from that player is them to reduce their pressing intensity but we want to keep that pressing intensity up because we want to steal the ball from the opposition. His midfield partnership is the Carrillero and I have picked him because he will be operating laterally roaming around staying wider but he will be operating kind of side to side not really venturing too far forward and not really dropping too deep back on the left hand side of the attack we have gone with the inverted winger he is shooting less often actually and he will be staying wider the reason why i have given him shoot less often is because the team instruction has shoot more often and with the inverted winger he will tend to shoot more often anyway because when he cuts in he will be looking for a through ball and he will be looking for a long shot and i want to tone down his shooting so he can also create for others his other instruction is also to stay wider and on the right hand side we have the ram Doita. now the only thing about him and this is where we are compromising is because he cannot stay wider a lot of the times he will be sitting more narrow because he wants to be attacking this space here getting in behind which is what we want from him but we also want him to stay wider and I do not have the option so so that is one very very annoying compromise as I also cannot stretch the player on the attacking with as that will just affect the whole play overall. The attacking midfielder he's just on the attacking midfielder role with the support duty as he will be operating in between the lines of the opponent's midfield and their defenders. His instruction is to take more risks try and create for these attacking players and finally the deep lying forward the Caputo role he will be also dropping deep trying to operate in between the central defense and the opponent's midfield and he also has no instructions on him now for the team instructions the mentality i have gone with the positive mentality the attacking width is unfairly narrow trying to channel our play through the middle but of course again it does not mean that all our play will be happening in the middle. This also gives some space for our wider players to operate and find space because when we are playing through the middle the opponents may try and close down in the middle and then that leaves space for our wider players out wide. Our approach play we are just going to be playing out from the defence and our passing directness is on shorter. In the final third we will be shooting on site because that is what Sassuolo are not afraid to do and dribbling we are going to be running at the fence trying to replicate that dribbling statistic that we spoke about earlier. In transition when the possession has been lost I didn't use the counter press as I feel they don't counter press as such is more timely pressing so if one player presses the others tight mark and I feel that if you are using counter press then everyone tends to press and when the possession has been won we are going to be counter attacking because Sassuolo can be frightening on that counter attack. When the goalkeeper is in possession he will be looking to distribute it to our centre backs. Out of possession we are using the offside trap so we are asking our defenders to step up. We are using the higher line of engagement but 
with the standard defence line. Our defensive width is on narrow so we are forcing the opposition on the outside. Our present intensity is on urgent whilst we are also preventing the goalkeeper from short distribution. So that is how I set up this tactic. Of course, if you have any suggestions or you disagree with anything, you can leave your suggestions and your disagreements, I guess, in the comments. But now we finish with the tactic, let's look at the statistics. First off, let's look at where we finished because we finished in impressive third place. We managed to qualify for the Champions League. Bear in mind at the beginning of the season, Swaswolo are predicted to finish 13th. So that is a very, very good achievement. So clearly, Deserby Ball works <laughs> in Football Manager 2021. By the way, I don't know if it is actually called Deserby Ball, but that is what we're going to go with. When it comes to our attacking efficiency, you can see that we are aggressive, so we're getting lots of shots, but we are also being wasteful. That is partly down to us shooting on sight. But with the general performances, our pass completion ratio is 91.58%, so we actually did better than Sassuolo in real life. Our tackles 1 ratio is on 82%, we are averaging around 1.71 goals per game, and our expected goals per game is 1.25. We are conceding around 0.89 goals per game with the expected goals against us is on 0.79 and shots per game we are averaging around 15.32 shots per game. And with our defensive efficiency you can see that we are very quiet and impenetrable. Now when we are comparing our statistics with the rest of the league our average possession is around 55% which is second in the league only behind to Atalanta. We managed to score the most goals in Serie A also having the highest goals per game but we did finish third with the expected goals for. When it comes to the pass completion ratio you will see that Atalanta again beat us as they are on 92% and Swaswolo came in second with 91% and passes completed we managed to complete 15,154 passes in the league again finishing second but this time we are behind Roma and no surprise when it comes to shots for we came in second with 582 alongside 243 of those shots being on target and this is one of the most important important stats alongside possession it is also the dribbles made as you can see we came first with that with 177 completed dribbles for Swaswolo and dribbles per game also we are averaging around 4.86 dribbles per game when it comes to the defence, of course, we do not have the best defensive record in the league as Sassuolo did not have the best defensive <laughs> record in the league in real life either. But we did do a little bit better and we managed to finish 7th when it comes to the table of goals conceded. And when it comes to expected goals against, we were very, very good there as we finished 16th with only 30 goals expected to go in against us. And finally, when it comes to interceptions, we came in fourth, completing 1,228 interceptions. One thing that just sprung to my mind and I completely forgot to show you is the record in the league. We played 38 games, winning 25 of those games, drawing seven and losing six. Those six games that we lost against came against Roma twice. We also lost against Verona. We lost against Crotone and we lost against Juve alongside Napoli. When checking our squad stats, you can see that Caputo scored the most goals, but Jeremy Boga had a very good goal scoring season with 11 goals alongside 13 assists, which is very, very good. Berardi managed to get 8 goals with a 7 assist and De Jurek managed to get 7 goals with 10 assists. That is it, unfortunately, for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for staying tuned. But most importantly, thank you guys for the support. It really, really does mean a lot. And I don't really want to speak too much about it because it is a little emotional. I really started out with nothing. I didn't even plan to be an FM content creator seven months ago. But seven months later, here I am. And I've got a decent following and alongside decent support. But Thank you guys. I hope to see you soon. Don't forget, if you are new to this channel or you haven't yet, please subscribe and like this video. I'll see you soon. Peace out, guys. And also, please, please, please stay safe.